Oh, man. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Glancentra. <laughs> That was a man, that was a man-sized tone, Dan, uh, which is not wishing to be um, uh, gender-specific or in any way sexist about it at all. Man, that's... <laughs> balls, <laughs> big ones. Yep. So Strange that was ones. the original mix, original clon. What's what's buzzing then? Something's humming. Is it's, it just is it are just the amps? I think it's just the amps. Oh, yeah, got a bit of hum going on today. Not quite sure why that is. There you oh. go. Ah. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, a little bit of hum. Um, yeah, okay. Clon. We're in we, clon land, but we we're, are not, clon we're, not, land. we're not doing a what sounds like a clon. No, we're not. Because so we've done that before. We did. That that was like two years ago. Was it? On our on the old channel. Two years ago. It's had nearly a quarter of a million views, that clon video. That's nuts. That's so, nuts. Yeah, we so last time I think we had, you know, all of the pedals that were clon clones. We sort of decided that compared to my original clon, which is the silver pedal there, the Rockia repaired amp was our favourite of the bunch on yep. that day, didn't we? It yep. sounded most like it. Yes. Um, most like that particular silver clon because they don't all sound the same by no, all accounts. No. And that, um, that does sound, it does sound completely spectacular, that clon. But um, what we wanted to have a look at today. Why do we, we like the clon? Uh, because it goes. Because it does this. Uh, so here's the two amps we're using today are Victory Sheriff 22, which is um, very much in the Marshall Plexi camp. We've mm -hmm. got it set uh, relatively high headroomy cleany. And a Fender Super Reverb, so we're sort of representing both of the classic amplifier camps. This and on together they sound like this on the neck pickup of my Fender Mexican 60s reverse headstock Stratocaster. Well done, <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> When you step on the clone. Oh, Michael, it's just, you make such a good note. It's a great sounding it's pedal. It's a, yeah, that one in particular. It's a great sounding pedal. So what does it do? It gives you a slight mid boost. It doesn't cut the high end in the same way that a tube screamer does. That's right. And it definitely gives you a little presency boost there mm -hmm. somewhere. So um, lots of people use them with the gain lower than this and the output lower than this, which sort of sounds like this. In fact, Bill Finnegan was going to make one without the gain control. Really? delightful that's the reference for the original clone and you heard it with Dan's um, Les Paul there for some humbuckers so we might step back to the clone every now and again but this really isn't about how much do these pedals sound like the yeah. clone it's let's move on from there yeah. and say okay a couple of things the clone really doesn't do doesn't give you very significant control over EQ mm -hmm. because you've just got that treble pot doesn't really give you because you've got the gain and the output You've only got sort of a very basic control of your 
the headroom and gain characteristics. Right. Which is something that we discovered in the Manticore is a very nice move forward. Yep. The Tumnus Deluxe is probably what today's show is really about because it's the latest thing from um, Wobbler. And hello, Brian, and everyone at Wobbler. Um, and the Tumnus is a phenomenally popular clon style. The Tumnus is my favourite small pedal. That, you know, that's that small um, format. I was. I was blown away when I heard it. It was great. And it was, um, the thing that's different with that and the clone that I found, it had a lot more bottom end. Yeah. So when this came out, I saw all the EQ controls and then I went, yay. Hello. So, uh, yeah. So what today is about, moving forward from the clone. So all these circuits are inspired by yes. the clone. Um, because the clone... There's this thing, the way it breaks up, the way it achieves its gain, it's really, it's sensational, it's really unique. Um, and I think the reason I'm, I'm using the Les Paul today is I particularly like uh, the clone style things with humbuckers. Right. The Yes, obviously it works great with strats, the John Mayer thing, awesome. But Johnny? This, yeah. J Johnny, oh, I keep forgetting you can honk him. I don't know him, but I've met him a couple of times. Um, so that's that sound, but I really like what clones do with, with the, sort of the PAF style yep. humbuckers. Yeah. And, okay. and, and please, in the comments, don't get into the, oh God, I can't believe clones are so expensive. It's ridiculous. It's all rubbish. Of course it's ridiculous. It's utterly insane that people pay the money they pay for them, and that is purely for rarity factor. Because you can buy a clone of a clone centaur that sounds every bit as good. That's you can buy a Bill G Bill Finnegan clone. Yeah, let's let's just get that said. So yeah, the used prices for original clones are in insane. Anyone who spends it is more interested in an investment than they are in a guitar sound. There you go. In my opinion, um, I didn't pay very much for that one at all because it was back before they were quite so renowned. Um, with that said, Manticore. 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 We looked at the Manticore um, by uh, Scotty Smith and the guys at Pro Analog Devices, and we looked at it at, in a pick and mix show fairly recently and liked it. Loved it. Very much. Yeah. So let's have a recap, shall we? So, as you can see, it's got an extra control compared to the um, Clom Centaur, which. rattling today. I don't really know why I'm playing that because it's not really that sound but I've, I've recently um, taken some of the finish off the neck of this guitar and Feels I amazing. now much prefer playing it. Did you do the headstock as well or just the neck? No, 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 you can see, look, glossy. Right. Not so glossy. Ah, oh, okay. I did manage to go through the fingerboard on a couple of places. Yeah, but that was ace. That's cool. That top end bite is just divine. Absolutely divine. So what we've got here is we've got additional control where the clone has just a single gain pot. This has got gain and drive. Remind me what they do, Dan? Okay, so the drive is driving into the gain circuit. Okay. So it's like a little preamp into the gain circuit. So if you play for a sec. Um, we've also got the uh, White Whale by Crazy Tube Circuits um, spring reverb and tremolo because we just did a video on it and we like it a lot. Mm -hmm.
all but indistinguishable. Man, it's. We was we said we weren't going to keep we said we weren't going to keep doing that comparing them, but I hadn't done that yet, and I would say that is all but indistinguishable, wouldn't you? Hair more gain on Scotty's. What? Put more gain on Scotty's? Yeah, just, just a little bit more. The the the, the input drive just picked that up just a tiny bit. There you go. Just wonderful. Okay, so we know it can get as close as we've heard, as as you like, yep. to the to the clan. So that's all good. Let's move along from there then. So I'm just gonna, if you carry on playing. That, just... Tell you what's really interesting about that is as we were pushing it there. Hello, ladies. Um, I hear the super getting louder, and it can, and the the um, and it's overdriving victory. the treble in the super in a different way than it's overdriving yeah. it in the victory. Let's just oh no, it's just too many. I was going to say let's hear it into a gainier ramp. Maybe we'll do that in a sec. Um, but it's definitely the super is taking all that headroom, headroom at the yeah. Manticore, whereas yeah. the the victory is starting to compress a yeah, little bit. Yeah, in a little bit, yeah. Oh man, okay, and then let's keep going and we'll just give it a lot more love. So if that wasn't obvious, what I did there is I turned the super reverb down and off and turned up the input gain on the victory and then turned the victory down and then turned the super up. So you heard the victory on its own, the super on its own, and then both amps on together. Just going to listen to what that sounds like with the strat second. <laughs> Thank you. 
we're rattling, we're rattling because we've got, got a bit of volume going. Okay, well, I don't think there's any doubt that it can sound just like the Centaur, mm -hmm. but quite a long way on from that in terms of the, the gain structure. It's really how really much you can awesome. get from it. Yep. Very good indeed. Very, very good indeed. I've got chills. They're multiplying. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. On to the Oxblood by our mm -hmm. dear friend, Mr. Robert Keeley. You've got to give him a honk. Um, we, there's a video we did with Robert, sort of, um, would you say ad hoc? Would that be a fair description? I, th I would say so. We were in Germany at Gitcon. We had some stuff. We thought we'd do a video. Yeah. And that was certainly worth If you haven't seen it, go and check it out because it's so much fun. Um, and this is... This wasn't on there, though. No. So I've wanted to check this out. This is new to me. I haven't actually heard the Oxblood, which is kind of shameful to admit. Right. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. So... Um, a few things about this, you've got a couple of uh, clipping diode options and the fat switch, um, which is going to help with the, well not help, but change the, the bottom end contour, as it were. Changes the stuff a little bit. Yeah. Changes some things. <laughs> right, uh, what are we on, 12? That's the one. So I think I'm right in saying the fat switch is on that way. Let's just try that. And the clipping is less clipped that way okay. and more clipped that way, I think. So it's going to be its most clonny uh, with the fat switch off and the clipping that way. Okay. I would suggest, um, and what I was hearing is how powerful this tone control is. Check this out. I want that fat, that fat switch somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle, yeah. To me, it sounds more like the tumnus with the fat switch on, because yeah, you put right. all that bottom end back. But, yeah. uh, again, pretty good clone impression. Great. Not a million miles in no. it. No. Um, certainly has that headroom characteristic. Um, you are able to retain the high end. It's a bit thicker in the low mids, mm. it's, in order to have the treble enough around. Okay, let's get some more drive on and see what happens. <laughs> That's where you hear the harshness of the Klon style sound when you don't have the when fatness. You don't have the fatness in it. Can works really well in a live environment because it cuts through, but it can sound a little ugly. Not unlike a tube screen with a load of top rolled on. Yeah.
with the fat switching gauge. That's yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> playable so with it harder clip like that I'm guessing that's I don't know but I'm guessing it's a different kind of clipping diode mm -hmm. with it harder clipped you get much more compression under the fingers yeah and loads more bottom end in however that top end still stays really clean mm. and defined which for me is a, a defining characteristic of the clon sound compared to a tube screamer which is where you lose all that high end right and that seems to keep it really nicely I just want to try that. Sorry, I want to try that with Telly because it's a sound awesome. <laughs> I was thinking there's no way this guitar would be in tune. Lovely. Okay, simple as that. Um, That's crazy. It, it, it never doesn't sound good, that guitar. picked up this guitar mm -hmm. because of the way the mid-range works in the clonny type sound mm -hmm. is very vocal mm -hmm. and this guitar has a lot of of that mm -hmm. still clear though <laughs> That's a big boy's grown up sound, that. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, I'm really impressed. It sounds amazing. It does. Mm. And it's funny because I like it in the in the low gain sounds. I really like it in the high gain. higher gain. You know what? I think I'm I'm wondering if this isn't going to become a a trend that we see with these because a lot of people love the clons for the lower gain sounds yeah. but have struggled with them. For the high gain thing, so I'm wondering, like the those two there, the Manicure and the Oxblood, in the high gain settings, you would struggle to get sounds that defined and clear with the original. So I think it wouldn't. No, no, no. I mean, let, let's just do that for a second. Here's here's high gain on a clon, and anyone any clon fans are now going no. <laughs> To be fair, it does sound pretty good. It sounds amazing. <laughs> it's got that. It's got that classic rock upper mid. Yeah. Um, don't know how to describe it. Reminds me of a Marshall with a 
Gibson cranked that particular type of mid-bark. Mm. You get bark, that's the word I'm going to use for that. Yeah, that sounds great. But it's quite different from yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. extra bottom end, just A-B those for a sec, all the extra bottom end. want loads of bottom end maybe the clom's not the right pedal for you good show ox blood man very cool okay tumnus deluxe tumnus deluxe let's just remind ourselves quickly of what the original tumnus sounds like okay uh maybe i should go back to the strat just to keep some continuity might pick that guitar up again in a minute but I think one reason a lot of people like the Tumnus so much is because it puts in a, lo a little bottom end mm -hmm. back in. Right, let's uh, now go to the deluxe. I've got um, yeah, just everything at twelve o'clock except the level because I don't know how that's it's going to be. The, the normal one. nice under the fingers. Thank you. 
Okay, so the Tumnus Deluxe can definitely do something that the regular Tumnus couldn't, and that is sound more like the Clon. There you go. With the bass turned down, yeah. the mids pushed. This uh, this is interesting. So um, normal and hot mode, which I guess is gain, is it? Yeah, I assume so. Lovely. That says buffer on it, so... It should have been buffer in bypass mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so just to, depending on what comes after. We should check that in the spec, but... Yeah. It's really great. It is really great. Yeah. And I think it adds similar functionality to this, mm. where um, moving on from that clonny sound, which clearly isn't for everybody, more gain, more bottom end, but based on that, on mm -hmm. that sound, mm -hmm. very cool, very cool, very cool. Right, this is the Sick As Overdrive by Bondi FX. Now, aren't these hard to get? Um, they, yeah. Well, they're an Australian company. Um, I don't think they make them in huge numbers, but you can get them. Can you? Yeah. You can oh get right. Them. I thought they couldn't get them in England or something. Please, please check uh, with your yes. please check with your local retailer, preferably Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey, uh, Riff City Guitar <laughs> in uh, New Hope, Minnesota. Matt will definitely be able to get them. Matt Matt at uh, Surface Paradise Guitars in. <laughs> uh, so yes, Matt, Matt from Pedal Empire. Matt from Pedal Empire will certainly be able to get them. Because he's Australian, and as we've said in a previous video, everyone in Australia knows everybody else. It's all right. That's it. Okay, so this because we thought this was tube screen mode before, didn't we? But no, it's actually but, but it's actually Connie. Connie. Yeah. Come on then. All right. So with everything. Um... Like a metronome. <laughs> A broken metronome. <laughs> Is that a bass cut switch? No, it, it's um, it changed the gain structure thing. Okay, see if, yeah. you, can, see if you can make it sound like the claw then. <laughs>
again, near enough. Great. Try some treble strings. Playing that reminds me of something that something else I love about the Clawn is the way it puts that little sizzle. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's between three or four K or something like that, but it overdrives those frequencies in a really lovely way, particularly yeah. with humbuckers. So nearly there with the with the sick house. I mean, pretty pretty similar. Mm -hmm. And then if we give it some mumbo, where do we get to? Righteous tasty noise! It's the sound for a band, mm. isn't it? Mm. Doesn't have that kind of internal organ moving bottom end no. that is really nice when you're playing on your own, but in a band that's just cut through, cut through, cut through, every note heard loud and clear. It's lovely. Happy days. Really, really lovely. Sounds cleaner than it is, is that too yeah. much of a cliche? No, no. It, Absolutely, it's um, it's the with some gainier pedals, it, it can seem a bit fluffy, but that's still really direct and clean. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, again, that's another defining characteristic of the Clon sound for me mm -hmm. is it puts the overdrive on the frequencies that enable you to cut without turning into some sort of compressed yeah. mush, which the tube screamer can very much get into. Can I just hear if it'll do the strat thickening? job yes you may because obviously a lot of people like the clon style pedal for that uh, so again here's our amps quite a nice sound Yeah, man. A bit more reverb. Thank you. 
Bit of compression on that, killer country sound. It's great, isn't it? I'm all conflicted. It's kind of one of those happy days, isn't it's it? A, what, I, there's, there's not a pedal on that board that I couldn't take off and happily go and make wonderful noise with. Yeah, it's funny because in a way the, the clon is such a... To say it's a one-trick pony is, is a brilliant paradox. A bit like an awesome vintage guitar or amp. It mm. ostensibly has this one thing that it does brilliantly well in terms of tone. Sure. If you said, okay, we're going to measure it in terms of gain and EQ and yep. all of that, there's, it kind of does one thing. Yep. But when you put it in the hands of Warren Haynes, David Grissom, John Mayer... John who? John, oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, David Grissom. Hey, David Grissom. Um, who else did I say? Warren Haynes. Never met Warren Haynes. Uh, John Mayer. Um, Joey Landreth. Uh, who else do I know who plays Clons? Um, I don't know if Sonny Landreth ever played one. Have interviewed him on the phone. Um, sorry, Sonny. Um, <laughs> who else? There's somebody else I'm thinking of that is a really famous Clon user. Anyway, they're used by players across genre. And do I know? I bet Doyle uses one. Never met him. Okay. That's going to happen. I've met him, so he... well, I've talked to him on the phone. <laughs> I've, I FaceTimed him. The, what I hoped Doyle Bramwell said to you was... No, I don't know. I don't know what I hope he said. He's just so cool. He's the coolest guy. He's so cool. Um, so even though it, it, it's ostensibly this kind of one sound pedal, mm. it enables all those guys to sound like themselves. Mm. And to me, that's where the, the, the appeal of the clon has always yeah. been. And is it? Because in the in context you can hear them. It's simply that yeah. you can hear them. Yeah. Is that it? That's, that must be it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Dave Grissom, for example, that chord stuff that he does. I mean, it's it's so awesome, but it's so, it, but with a sound that is so massive. Yeah. That if, it could if, easily get lost. If you don't know David Grissom, by the way, this is his guitar, the, the uh, Paul Reed Smith DGT. Mm -hmm. David Grissom's an awesome, awesome, um, awesome guitar player. Amazing guitar player. But with the con thing that just projects those frequencies in the, in the right spot. Now, completely different to, yeah. to John Mayer, but in a thick, dense um, mix, you can just, you can hear. Mm. Everything. I think that's all it is. Different than the than a tube screamer type thing because the tube screamer doesn't have that top end. Sure. You know, it, yes, it spike, it punches the middles up, the mids up, and that's great. But the difference with that is, you can it did the clarity. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's partly because of the way it has that upper mid yeah. mid range into treble kick. Um, and also because it doesn't seem to separate out the overdrive from the clean sound, which I know a tube screamer doesn't actually do, but it kind of sounds like it does. Yeah. So, okay. The appeal of the Tumnus, the original Tumnus, the small box Tumnus, was mm -hmm. it kind of sounded like a Klon, but it had much more bottom end. Because mm -hmm. one of the things people don't like about the Klon is that it does not have an expansive bottom end, which yeah. makes all the difference when you're playing really loud and your amp's got loads of bass in it. Mm -hmm. You don't want loads of bottom end. However, for those of us who have to play more quietly, more frequently through smaller amps, Tumnus really deals with that. Beautifully. That, yeah. And I think the sick as kind of falls into that territory as well. It does, but you've got control over the bottom end. Yeah, because there's a bass knob and there's the two clipping options. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of gone original, we've moved on a little bit, we've moved on a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then the other three really, to me, feel like they're moving on a lot more. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I go with that. Okay, Mick, you can take one home with you. I knew you were going to ask that. I knew you were going to ask that. If I was, if I was looking for the Grissomy, Billy Gibbonsy, higher gainy. One, two, three, medical. No, no, no. No. For the okay. higher gain stuff, I would go with the Tumnus Deluxe or the Oxblood. Right. Probably okay. the Oxblood. Right. But to be honest, there's. I couldn't. I wouldn't want to choose between sure. them because I don't think there is anything to choose in between them. Um, 
And also it would be amp dependent for me. If I was playing a clean yeah, amp, yeah, which, yeah. which had a lot of headroom and not much um, overdrive, again, Oxblood or Tumnus Deluxe. Mm. However, for me, for the sounds I play into my amps with Strat and the sounds I go for yeah. every day of the week. Yeah. It's exceptional. Yeah, it's it's it is amazing. It's to put to, amazing. to I haven't heard a pedal yet that I can put next to that original centaur and go, yeah. Nailed. We haven't had that yet. No. The the um Rocky well, repaired amp came close. Yep. And actually in some there were some parts about it I preferred. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And it's smaller. Number of times I've tried to put that on my board and gone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. For me personally, if I could only take one, it, I'd probably be the same. Only because the job that I want the clon to do is not the high yeah. gainy type thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I would say um, the high gain sounds to me, I've got to, they're probably the sick as. Right. I, it just was a bit cleaner. Yeah, but it didn't, it didn't have as, anyway, it didn't have as, it? as much gain. As much gain. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it didn't have as much gain. But um, I know there's something there was in its in its upper gain register. I thought I did think that sounded great. But maybe um, it's just because it has a similar gain characteristic to the clone, But I could just give it a little bit more bottom end. Yeah. In that, in that sound, I don't know. Um, no, I no, was really. I mean, the, no the, duffers. No, no duffers. The, the, like, okay, the Tumnus Deluxe is awesome. I love that um, with everything at noon, it sounds more like the the Centaur than the original Tumnus. Um, you've got to give it a bit more bottom end to sound like the original Tumnus, but then you've got all that tone shaking possibility. It's great. Um, and the Oxblood was a real surprise. Yeah. Because I've never heard a. Uh, a Keeley pedal, apart from your side of the DNM drive that does that. So it's very cool. Very, very cool. Well. Can we be any more diplomatic? No. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, what have we achieved? Um, I don't know. If you like the uh, Clon Centaur sound, you can't find an original. Well, there's there are plenty of options for that. Yeah. Um, you know, loads of people make Clon clones. There's a there's that guy uh, Seriatone is it Keriatone Seriatone, who made the Dumble clones who's now makes all the, those planets making unbelievable clones of the original clones like gold plated and really yeah and just like casting the boxes and everything and no doubt the circuit is is wonderful. A friend of mine made a um, uh, it was a like a matchless DC thirty clone. It cost him like 200 quid <laughs> to get the bits. And he sat there, because you can buy them, you, you could buy them in kit form. I don't know if you still can, but you can right. get them in kit form or whatever. No idea. And um, it cost him like 200 quid. Sounds amazing. How long did it take him to make? Oh, he's, he's third generation now. Yeah, now yeah. working on it. <laughs> Got his grandkids testing capacitors. But no, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah it sounds great. Um, so... There's a lot to love about the Clone Centaur sound, and it is available from cloners, and it's available from originals, and it's available in the um, the updated one, which I always forget the name of, which I've never owned, which I must get. The KTR. The KTR, yes, of course, um, which also sounds fantastic. So that you know, the original Clone Centaur sound is definitely available now. Add gain, add bottom end, add functionality yep. and versatility, and you get into Tumnus Deluxe, Manticore, and Oxblood, and I think. It's pretty compelling. Yeah. Amazing. Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Yes. Um, please subscribe. Yeah. We're now, as, as we make this video, we're on 113,000 subscribers, which is approximately the amount of subscribers that, uh, what's his name? PewDiePie? Right. Picks up every day. <laughs> Okay. Not quite. My but. my son watches him. Does he? Yeah. And I'm I'm I look at him going. I oh, know I can't say that. I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, 
a massive thank you to all of our friends on Patreon, our patrons on Patreon. Guys, thank you so much. Yes, we really appreciate thank it. Thank you kindly. Um, also, to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Anderton's Music of Guildford in Surrey. In the USA is... <laughs> Riff City Guitar, uh, whose new store is in New Hope, Minnesota. If you're in the area, go and check it out because it's very, very cool. Sorry, I get confused between Minneapolis and Minnesota, which is crazy. It's like getting confused between Gloucester and Gloucestershire, which I'm sure is what happens to Americans. Okay. It's not my fault. And in Australia? That would be Pedal Empire in Ayers Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Just next door to Hank Marvin's house in... Uh, where does he live Brisbane. on the left? In, on the left? Yeah. Perth. Perth, yeah. It's on the opposite side. It's in Brisbane. I don't... You know. It's an island. Have you not been to Australia? Yes. When you fly over Darwin, you look down and it's red, right? It's just red. It's just, yeah. All there is is red. You go to sleep for five hours, you wake up, it's, it's still red. red. It's colossal. It is, it is crazy. Yeah. I remember, I remember um, used to fly between Sydney and Perth a lot. And you'd, you'd fall asleep in Perth, you'd wake up. You'd fall asleep in Sydney, wake up six hours later, it'd still be in the air. Mm. You know, it's like over one country. Mm. It's beautiful. Anyway. Yeah, so just a short walk to yeah. Brisbane. Um, yeah, so Matt at Pedal Empire. So that was a that was an awesome tangent. Are we ever going to get... Yeah, this is getting longer and longer. We should try and set some sort of world record. Please go to the thatpedalshowstore.com website uh, and uh, pick yourself up a um, garment. I do like the camouflage. It looks very cool. I put mine in the wash and shrunk it because I tumble dried it hot by mistake, so don't do that. I had to get a new one. Did you? Yeah. It's okay. I've got a discount. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, have a fantastic weekend, or if you're watching this um, On a Monday, have <laughs> a great day. We haven't, we haven't even been drinking. That's the truth of the matter. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you later. Bye. Ha <laughs>